I wanted to talk about 12-step programs a little bit if I could. So there are all kinds of things online, like in the rooms, where you can go get some help and you can be around like-minded people who are struggling in their recovery. And people who have had a lot of recovery who aren't struggling can give you advice on, you know, what they did that worked for them. And you can pick up what works for you and leave the rest. But if you do go to 12-step programs, you, you the, the G-O-D word is in the literature. So they're, they're not faith-based, but they are spiritual-based. Um, and so you got to have an open mind. If you're going to go to 12-step meetings like AA and N, you're going to have to have an open mind and not judge everybody. There's people in meetings that are pretty sick. There's people in meetings that are pretty healthy. And we don't kick anybody out for anything. So even if they're, you know, misbehaving at the meeting, we don't kick them out. We don't kick them out for using or drinking at the meetings. So, you know, it's just like you've got to keep, if you're going to be in 12-step programs, you have to keep an open mind and you have to check your judgmentalism, which is not an easy thing to do. Um, my, I've, I've worked with thousands of people. What I've seen happen to the people who get clean and stay clean is they all have a different story, but they all have the same sentence. I don't know what happened, but it was something spiritual that I got clean. So I think a spiritual direction, a spiritual journey, I'm not talking about whatever tweaks somebody's you know, balloon or whatever it is, whatever makes sense to you. A spiritual direction is really key to recovery because it's going to give us all kinds of things that we can use to work on ourselves and to, you know, be okay with ourselves and change ourselves and find a direction. Just doing the next right thing is a spiritual direction as far, as best you can. Just do the next right thing instead of the next wrong thing. I think most people in general have a still small voice within them that says, don't do that. But we don't listen. So listen to the voice within you. It's, there's a direction inside you. There's a spiritual direction in there. And you can listen to it and nurture it and become better, become more healthy. But don't rule out a spiritual direction in recovery. I think it's one, I think it's personally, I think it's the most important thing. I'm and actually I, really glad that you brought that up because I've actually had a lot of patients who were sort of dabbled in AA or NA and they just told me, you know, they talk about a higher power and everything, and I don't believe in all that stuff. I'm just not comfortable. I don't want to go to, I don't want it to be like I'm going to church. Whatever you are is fine with me. I would tell them this story. So I was struggling with all that. I was raised Catholic, and that's another story. But, you know, but so, so I, I wasn't, you know, this G.O.D. stuff did not sit well with me. And so I was complaining and about that, you know, in recovery. And then uh, a guy took me aside. He said, well, can we talk about that? And I said, sure. He said, do you know if there's a force for evil in the universe? I said, yeah, I do. I've been it. I've been locked up with it. And I've seen human beings do the most horrendous things to each other in my addiction time. I've seen it. He said, are you sure? I said, yeah, I'm sure. I'm positive there's evil. I mean, it works through other people. He said, then you already got spirituality. What you got to do is pretend there's a yin for that yang. That if there's a force for evil in the universe and you know it exists, then there's got to be a force for goodness. Pick that as your higher power. Just pretend there's a force for goodness in the universe. And you don't have to describe it or anything. Just pretend there's a force for goodness, just like a force for evil. And the next time you want to make a decision on what to do, ask yourself, what would this force for goodness have me do? And do that. And that's how I started. And it morphed into a, a wonderful spiritual journey for me. But I, that made sense to me. You know, you got you to gotta go to a place where, where you, you can't preach to people. You got to go to a place where they understand something. I think most addicts, most alcoholics understand evil very well. So then they can understand this force for goodness and start there and 
and and see where it takes you. I was pretty judgmental about everything, you know, and I wasn't going to listen to people. But, you know, if you talk to me about what makes sense to me, you know, what I've witnessed in life, then I can, you know, kind of listen to you a little bit. The answer in the end is compassion for yourself and all living beings. That is the answer. And that is the key to happiness. That much I do know. But neither of those things is easy to come by.